Hi, I'm Tane. And I'm Aid, and this is Alter Call, a Married at First Sight podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of MAPS, Season 17, Episode 7. Hi, Aid. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. You sound very not congested. I, last week I said, oh, you sound just like me. Because yes, I have a very <laughs> another very minor cold because um, I just cannot escape them. It just could be allergies, you know. This time I know it's not allergies. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> usually I'm like, it's just allergies. This is not allergies. This is just a, a cold. Okay. Do we have anything that we want to update the people on? Um, after party, it's going to be on Patreon. It always goes up on Mondays. So look out for it there. And then Sister Wives is drawing to a close with these so-called tell-alls where they tell nothing. But we will be covering um, the four parts in two parts. So be on the lookout for uh, Sister Wives coverage. Uh, Have you watched the first one? I sure did. It was awful. I did not hear them say one new thing that they hadn't already said. It was all, and I don't care how much you hate each other. Get them in the same room. I don't care. <laughs> I'm really hopeful that something's going to happen in part two. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the audacity to have a four part reunion. The audacity. <laughs> but you know what? I'm watching because it's Sister Wives. Okay. I also want to mention to you guys that announced this week is that there's going to be a two part special for Christine's wedding. Um, which is going to be strange in the timeline because I feel like they've shot a whole other season uh, between this current season and Christine's wedding. But Mm -hmm. they're going to show us a two-part special, so that will be great. And uh, we will definitely be covering that. Okay. Yay. All right, Tane, what's happening in Bassland? I mean, not much, but I have a few things. So we know Jamie and Beth are going through a divorce. Beth still has not spoken on it. Um, She doesn't have to. I'm just saying, like, she just hasn't said anything about it. Um, She is building her own apartment. I think, last I checked, she did decide to stay in Denver. So, oh, wait, that is where they're filming. They should have Beth on after party. Um, Yeah, she decided to stay there. And she had a picture of a beauty station, you know, where you do your makeup and all with the lights and all that. She called it a sleigh station. And she said this is one of the few items that she was allowed to take. Ooh. So it looks like it's contentious. And she has been making comments like that. She was looking for bar stools and she's like, yeah, because she couldn't take any of the eight. I guess um, somebody needed all eight of the bar stools that they had. So it's not looking good, but uh, I hope they both heal. <laughs> um, Eric from Atlanta was in California and I just found this really interesting he was in the Hollywood Walk of Fame where all the stars are and the caption was from the worst to arguably the best star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and the wor- the worst star was on Michael Bolton what did Michael Bolton do to you? <laughs> that was my question <laughs> I was truly wondering who is that going to be? And then the best, the, the arguably best star was Chuck Norris. So that, <laughs> choices that were was, made. That was very interesting. Very interesting. Um, Jasmina from Boston got an award, but the spelling of her name was J A S E M I N A. And her caption was, yes, there's an E in my name. And no, I don't want to talk about it. So is she telling us that the producers of the show changed her name? No, I think she doesn't like the E in her name. But officially, I don't think she's changed it. So there's nothing she can do about it when she goes for like functions. It's going to be what they see officially. Interesting. That's my guess. (laughs) And finally, where in the world is Haley? Haley is in Chile, living her best life. Good for Haley. Has she, has it been a while since she's been on a trip or we just haven't been reporting? I just haven't been reporting. It's, it's, she's everywhere all the time, living her best life. And that's all I got. All right, guys, we will be right back to talk about this very roller coaster of emotions episode. 
Hey guys, we know that ads could get very pesky. If you would like to listen to our episode without ads, you can join our Patreon. We have a $3 tier where you can listen to the episodes ad free. Check it out. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on these jam packed days. I really enjoy Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service. I've been eating chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals that are delivered straight to my door. You all know that I'm a busy bee and Factor has saved me time and helped me eat better during this holiday season. If you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel your best, try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Some of us have to go back into the office, which means we have to think about lunch. Factor has you covered with lunch to go. Effortless wholesome meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Head to factormeals.com slash altocallmass50 and use code altocallmass50 to get 50% off. That's code A-L-T-A-R-C-A-L-L-M-A-F-S-50 at factormeals.com slash altocallmass50 to get 50% off. The mistletoe margarita, the Scrooge driver, the North Pole punch. Which drink is best for the holidays? The answer all of them. And luckily, you can get everything you'll need delivered with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. Whether it's classic like Bullet Bourbon, Don Julio Reposado, or Kettle One, or something new, fruitcake flavored tequila anyone? Okay, maybe not that. But you can get the drinks you do want to match any holiday festivity on Drizzly. Sending a gift to your family, friend, or coworker? Hosting some friends for an ugly sweater party? Restocking your bar, you name it, and Drizzly has you covered. Shop curated gift guides, get recommendations from experts, and more on Drizzly. So download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com to choose your drinks today. Must be 21 and, huh. Must be 21 and up, not available in all locations. And we're back. Aid, what did you think of this episode? You said a roller coaster of emotions. Multiple people on the show um, mentioned a, mo- a roller coaster of emotions, and I think that's where I was. Where were you? You know, I don't think I felt safe. <laughs> Are you a sister wife? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that a lot this episode. I was just like, I don't know. No, but truly, truly, um, this was an infuriating episode. It truly was a roller coaster because. I'm oscillating between recognizing Orion's emotions, but also like, huh? What is going on? So much going on. So let's get into it. The only thing I'm sure of is like I, episode seven and I'm entertained by this season. I am so grateful. Um, There's that. For that. For that. The show okay. is delivering on being a TV show and I appreciate that. Yes. Okay. So- I think you mentioned it last episode. This has been a long-ass honeymoon. Like, why the hell are we still in Mexico? (laughs) When are we leaving? (laughs) So we pick up where we ended with Orion basically slut-shaming Lauren at the dinner. Um, And this man says he's curious that it sounds like she's not okay with it. I'm like, yeah, think, buddy. So she says, you know, it just felt like you were mildly judgy. And, like, she just wants to know why that is the reason that sex is off the table. Mr. Flip Flopper says that it's not the reason, but it definitely played a part. I'm like, if it's not the reason, why haven't you mentioned to her before that sex is off the table? Lauren says she's confused. He says, well, there's a lot of steps that we have to take to be in a position. Like, I don't want us to regret, yada, yada, yada. Lauren says, well, things are not aligning with the conversation that we're having. Like, she's not sure if he's not aware of his flip-flopping. Yes, she actually used the word flip-flopping. And she just feels like they should have a quiet meal. (laughs) (laughs) If you ever want to tell somebody really nicely to STF you, you could just say, let's just have a quiet meal. (laughs) (laughs) They have the quiet meal for five seconds. A riot is uncomfortable. And I think, was it, I I can't remember if this was the one I mentioned, but he starts a lot of sentences with, if I'm being honest, and he's like, if I'm being honest, I'm not good with the quietness. She's like, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. 
I have nothing else to add to this conversation that's going to be conducive. He's like, but we have to figure things out. And she starts to tear up and she says, but it doesn't have to be right now. He goes, why? And she goes, I don't feel safe. And I'm like, holy, okay. I can understand this. Like, listen, conflict styles is something I had to learn, you know, as an adult, as I navigated relationships, because I'm the kind of person that wants to talk it out right here, right now. But I had to recognize some people don't want to talk in the heat of the moment. You got to give it time. And then let's all talk with a clear head. But right now, I think I think it was the silence that just kind of did it for him. <laughs> he was just not ready to sit in that. Because it wasn't a pleasant silence. It was an uncomfortable silence. It was. It was. So she says, I'm being very clear. We need ample time to discuss. Orion says... He is sorry if she felt this man did not finish his sentence because Lauren cut him off and was like, I don't need and I'm sorry if you felt apology. You know better than to damn well give that kind of apology. And then he finally is like, I mean, then I guess I really have nothing else to say. I mean, that's what she's been trying to tell you, son. <laughs> like, <laughs> Stop. So, <laughs> I thought about it though, and you just talked about this. There's just different styles of conflict. Mm -hmm. You can't really unilaterally say we're just going to stop talking now. Yeah, that has to be a mutual decision, and clearly it didn't work because you can't really unilaterally say, "Oh, I've decided we're not talking anymore about this." Yeah. I think maybe a better, well, I wouldn't say better because he does come off as passive aggressive is like, he can keep talking and she just be like, I don't really have anything I can respond to this because I'm hot right now or to use his own words, I'm heated. So I can't say anything or I don't know what the best thing is. I don't know. Relationships are hard. I'm, I'm not judging really either. Well, I am judging one of them. I think that she could have said, let's table this discussion. <laughs> and yeah. maybe that could have made it a more pleasant break. But I mean, there was actually no way to salvage this. So it, whatever, it was fine. Yeah. So Emily and Brennan, they're at dinner. And for those who missed after party, Emily said last week that she feels like something is off and that he's withholding physical affection. Again, it has still not come up on the main episode. But Emily says, you know, they should talk about religion, that she's Catholic, and we find out that he's, no, we didn't find out, we knew, that he's Jewish. She asks how he would want to raise the kids because she definitely doesn't want them Catholic. And he's like, um, would she convert? And she's like, yeah, I'd convert, even though I don't know what it entails. And he's like, neither do I. And I'm like, how do you just commit to something? <laughs> Well, I mean, what I know of it is what Charlotte did on Sex in the City, and that was a lot. Yeah, so, a woman converting to Judaism is no joke. Yeah, so I don't And think I think she knows not all parts, anyway, I don't want to get into an educated discussion, but you have to be a certain kind of Jewish to even accept converts, I think. Yeah, so I don't know why she just quickly, just, you don't even have to go that far, just agree to what you want to agree with, and let's see how it goes. But, I mean, I think, like, she notices she's overcompensating for not being in a relationship. So she, he asks why she doesn't want the kids Catholic. And she's like, it's a little bit too culty for me. I mean, as a Catholic, I'm not offended. But I'm just <laughs> like, it's too culty for you. But you just agreed to convert. But you don't know what it entails. But what if you find that culty too? Like, make it make sense, Emily. I'm with I you mean, there. Um, yeah. Most orthodox re religions are could be seen as culty. Right? Most all religions could be interpreted <laughs> as culty. <laughs> okay, that's true. So, so I don't. Yeah, that was a very odd thing to say, but I know, like you said, more evidence of how Emily is just willing to bend, and I'm just concerned about which way she's going to bend. Yeah, true that. As a sidebar, guys, speaking of cults, everyone should go watch Love Has Won on HBO Max. It's just three episodes, but you are never going to have seen... I watch a lot of cult documentaries. I've never seen anything like this before. This is ridiculous. But yeah, go watch it. I started it. it, but I did finish it. But I might go back and finish it on your recommendation. Those people look very unwashed. 
Um, just, the, just <laughs> the parts unhealthy. that I've watched. <laughs> just unhealthy. Wow. Okay, let me try to go back and then finish it on your recommendation. Yeah, please do. I, I, I had to take a break. If I had to take a break from a three episode, it's crazy. Okay, so he says that it's refreshing to talk to her, that it's so easy. And I'm like, of course it is, buddy. You don't have to do anything. She just volunteers as tribute for everything. And of course, it's easy for you. He says that it leaves the door open to try new things. And he appreciates her and they cheers to that. I'll give him brownie points for verbalizing that he appreciates her. I'm very big on words of affirmation, especially because they're getting to know each other. So I think it's good. So you're not like, I don't know where you stand, like some people. So I gave him brownie points for that. Um, she does ask about kids. He said he wants to, they talk about football and what team they're going to support. They talk about him converting to uh, to supporting the Broncos because that's who she supports. I don't know. These people don't seem like fans to me because that's not how uh, fandom works. It's not where you move to, then you switch teams, and it don't work like that. But, you know, if they like it, I love it. He says that she has compromised so much for him that he's willing to do that and convert, you know, to supporting the Broncos. Um, His mom, he says that his mom made a comment like, if they agree on everything, how would they challenge each other? I mean, I'm sure that's supposed to be profound, but honestly, it sounded like a hater comment. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, is it because his mom seemed like a hater before? Because I didn't take that as a hater comment. No, the mom hater was Bren, was Austin's mom. Mm-hmm. That was the hater. So no, she didn't come up. His mom hasn't come up as a hater, but it just... I, I would take that as a hater comment. It's a legitimate <laughs> observation. <laughs> How are you okay. supposed to grow if you agree on every single thing? And I, but why are you calling your mom to say you agree on every little thing? You probably don't. You've only known it, this woman for like six days. Trust me, you'll find something if you haven't already. I think that was my point. Was like it's just smooth sailing. You're in your honeymoon. You're doing what you're supposed to do on your honeymoon. Best self, even if it's a lie. Like it's not natural that you're gonna agree on everything. So yeah. So. He said, it seems pretty smooth to me, so good luck to them. We It's a very heavy, Lauren and Orion heavy episode. We go back to Lauren and Orion. They're in their PJs. She walks into the room, and she's like, oh, funny meeting you here. It's like, oh, that's a very passive-aggressive statement. Where else is he supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> so she gets into bed, and Orion says, so what's a temporary solution? that he's really sorry he wasn't supportive like she wanted. He iterates that the sex off the table is not because she had had sex. And I'm like, does this man forget that we heard him say right before she mentioned that she'd had sex two months before? They were talking about foreplay, going down on each other, what they're going to do. And he was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to resist you. And she's not supposed to think that it's not, it's because she said that. You take us for idiots, sir. I'm offended. I'm offended. So he tries to talk and she's like, I don't want an apology. Stand on what you said. Like, I want answers. Why did you say it if it's not what you meant? He says, because it's kind of the truth. She goes, oh, uh-huh. he's saying the truth. He goes, no, I've always said the truth. Okay, at this point, I'm on her side, but Loki, she was talking to him like a child. <laughs> she, you know, that's so funny. I didn't see it that way. I honestly thought this is. <laughs> I thought to myself, I would want to argue with Lauren. <laughs> There's too many receipts. She's gonna make you acknowledge exactly what you said. You can't make any excuses. Her memory is just fine. <laughs> and Orion was trying to dip and bob and weave, and she was like, "No, I got you." <laughs> Yeah, no, she's very articulate. She was making that point, like, just, like, stating her receipts, like, I- I'm ready for you today. But I also think it was the only way she could talk to him to make him stand on his two feet and say everything he said with his chest. Because any other way, he would have, like you said, be bobbing and weaving. So he now says, you know, because you were engaged, and I'm like, you mean, like, I was engaged even when I wasn't selected. Then it flip-flops to, had you not signed up for the show? She goes, yes. 
She was like, okay, so you think I did not take it as seriously as you did? He says, that's not what I'm saying. She says it explicitly again. Then I need you to give me answers. I don't do gray or whatever the hell is going on on here. And I promise you, you won't hurt my feelings. Why did that comment make you take sex off the table? <laughs> and she was also lying about it, not hurting her feelings. She was just saying, say what you need to say without consideration of my feelings. But honestly, because otherwise you're, you're going to keep on lying. And then later on, you'll say, oh, it was to protect your feelings. She said, don't worry about my feelings. Say what you got to say. Yeah, I'd rather the truth and I'll heal, but just say the truth. And then he says, because, you know, the intention with the process, but you literally, she asked you previously, are you saying I didn't take it as seriously? You said, that's not what I'm saying. And then he goes, okay, I did not feel comfortable with the fact that you had had sex while going through everything with the process. She asks again, why? Because it's different from what you did why does it mean that my intention was different? He switches. Oh, I'm not judging you for it. Everything you have done, sir, has been judgment. People will always tell on themselves. She never said the word judge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he introduced that word in because that's exactly what he was doing. And he knew it. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I feel uncomfortable. And she said, I think it's unfair. He says, I stand on the fact that I wasn't judging you. <laughs> and then she goes, okay. And then he goes, I'm uncomfortable. And that's all I can give you, that the way that it came up was careless. She says, your truth is your truth, and that's all you have. So please stand on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't want to argue with Lauren. It's your worst nightmare. Listen. <laughs> Araya looks very distressed. I am so sorry, guys, but that was a slow clap for me, for Miss Lauren, because I don't know that I could have done what she did. And this is the part where her tone might have been elevated, but I I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with it. Like, if you've argued in a relationship, no one's saying you should yell or scream at each other. I don't think it was yelling. I think it was elevated, yes, but usually that happens when you're arguing with someone um but i think i don't know did you think it was on a scale of one to ten how bad or disrespectful or whatever did you think it was it was none of those things she i i had a huge amount of respect for lauren during this argument i could never be this coherent i could never have this good of a memory i arrived as a child that's how I looked at it. And that's probably giving him way too much grace, which he has for nobody else. But it's like, this is what a, a, a grown up argues with a child. <laughs> yeah. She's very direct. She has emotion because she's upset. She was not elevated. And when we get to later, I, I have some key thoughts about elevation, tone. I, I know. I thought she was fine. I just think Orion's a child, to be honest. And that's actually giving him way too much grace. He's a grown ass man who couldn't stand in what he said and she had to force him into it. It is. And also there's been situations you've seen people like there's been enough like situations where people gaslight people and think that they're not because they're the ones talking in a calm tone or whatever and stuff like that. Like, I don't think that's an indicator of anything. So anyways, we move on to Claire and Cameron. Cameron has had some water issues in his ear and he has to go get it checked out with the doctor. Um, the first thing Claire says is, I have a mandatory meeting that I have to attend. Okay. So Cameron says he'll go to the doctor while her meeting is happening, that as long as it's today, he just wants to get it checked out. She says they should have breakfast before they go, and he asks her what his order is. She does get it right, and she tells us in the confessional, that she feels good about the honeymoon. There's an intimacy and attraction is growing. And she's saying this as we watch him run his fingers down her arms. But I will not forget that this is not what she's saying on After Party. She told us it feels like being stuck <laughs> and not being able to get out of it. <laughs> so I don't know. Like I said, I probably should just two different shows. Um, she says like it's a relief that they've been able to get to that point. Cameron thinks that when they live together, they're going to be great at it. I don't know why he thinks that, but, you know, good on him. Positive 
manifestation, I guess. This is um, something I appreciate <laughs> about Cameron. I do think he leans towards positive thinking, um, especially about the two of them. And maybe it's just a show for us, but he tends to be like, it's going to be fine. We're going to be okay. We're going to grow. Like, I'm not surprised. That he's like, no, we're going to be fine living together. Cause I think he's at heart, uh, an optimist. Um, his wife swings the opposite because it doesn't matter what it is. She will be sure to vocalize. Like, I don't even blame her for having fears or negative thoughts, but it's the fact that she thinks she needs to vocalize it at the most inopportune times because this man just says like, Oh, good thing. Like, it, we didn't get like a sign like we're going to be terrible if we live together and immediately she's like well i'm independent i do a lot of things by myself but i did this because i don't want to do this by myself like it's going to be hard but it's not going to be hard like it'll just be a lot of change and confessional cameron says that the only way it will work out is when he walks through the door at the end of the day and all his problems melt away and he really feels like it's going to be that way with Claire. My first thought was, bless your heart. <laughs> but again, positive manifestation. But Claire says it again when they were talking about it, like, yep, it'll be good. Like she has like fears, but it will be a lot of change. I thought I, it was it was very odd when Claire was like, I can't wait to get back to my routine. And I'm like, your whole <laughs> life has changed here. You've acquired a whole husband. Whatever routine you had before, it cannot be the same. <laughs> so I was like, uh, what is your routine? Is it like your favorite coffee shop? Or is it like, yeah, I get up by myself and I do X, Y, Z without consideration for anybody else? Because that's not your routine anymore. I'm not even buying the whole independent, does a lot of things by herself. Isn't she part of a codependent large family? What are we talking about here? And she's part of like a quadruplet. Like, so she's never by herself. She has triplets. And she's the one that has that sister that feels like she owns her. Right? Is that I mean, sister? Do they all live in Denver, though? I think so. Wait, why do I think so? I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe they do. All I'm saying is... I, you you were saying maybe she's not as independent as she's saying. I don't yeah. know why she keeps on running her mouth about being independent. <laughs> well, after I mean, getting she's, married, it's odd. <laughs> she's the one who told him that we do a lot of family things. It can get overwhelming. We do things together. So I just couldn't imagine her just doing a lot of things by herself. But I could be wrong. Um, <clears throat> Becca and Austin are having breakfast. He asks her if there's anything specific she wants to talk about. She says religion. He says he doesn't know what that is and laughs. I'm like, hmm. He says, we should probably talk about it. She's like, okay, right now. And he goes, probably not now. <laughs> and then she tells us that she wants to give him space, but it stings when it feels like your partner is rejecting you. Um, I don't know if this was a joke. He's like, oh, it's early and I don't want to scare you off. Um, we're back to Lauren and Orion. Lauren tells us that she woke up and Orion wasn't there that they had more conversation and she told him that she felt judged and attacked for her sexual past. He got emotional and told her that he understands the consistency he hasn't been there and he doesn't care that she had sex two months ago. I just, <laughs> she says she can extend grace, but it still makes her feel unsettled. I just, Orion wishes that he could take back what he said, but you can't take back what you said because quite frankly, that was your honest reflex reaction and you can't take back saying that sex is not just something that you give out to anyone and anything and all that stuff so for you to say you didn't care that you had sex i think a more honest reaction is honestly i did feel uncomfortable but i feel like i have to look within myself to find out why that made me uncomfortable and i'm sorry that i reacted that way and that's it he's not capable um Emily and Brennan are playing a bunch of games and Emily impressively is playing every game with just her left hand. Like they were shooting hoops, they were playing table tennis, they were playing, I don't know what it's called. I've only ever seen it on the challenge, karacha balls or something like that. I don't know that you throw it around or whatever. I'm probably saying it wrong, but um, this hand is still not wrapped. I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, they're done and they're sitting down and she's just joking. And this poor lady is like, do you know how to have fun? Who knew that this was going to make Brennan very annoyed? 
I wasn't expecting it. And he's like, what do you mean? Didn't you see me have fun when you're out there? She's like, I'm just kidding. I mean, it was very obvious she was kidding. Ah, like, joke, joke, funny, funny. <laughs> she just had fun with him. So Emily tells us that she's taken aback, that he's seen something different and she doesn't know what that is. Honestly, I think that was a confessional for something else because it kind of didn't make sense. Um, we thought that was a one and done. But it came up again. They were in the corner and he was like, did I have fun? How could you ask me that question? Did I have fun? And it wasn't until after party that I thought about it. And I was like, oh, they probably didn't know that they were being filmed. Did you have that thought? Because I didn't. I did not have that thought. And I was like, but how could you not know that you're not being filmed? You're still mic'd. There are still cameras. Um, (laughs) That's why we have hot mic moments. They forget sometimes. But um, I'm like, she's like, stop, you need to get over it. But uh, good sir was not happy. Back to Lauren and Orion. Lauren gets back from the gym and he tells her that, you know, he wanted to sit in his emotions because he feels emotionally depleted. (laughs) I don't, (laughs) it's fine for Orion to be emotionally depleted, honestly, But honestly, this just tells me that he's not ready. Like, this is what has set you back and drained you. Do you know what you have in store for, like, how many ever years ahead of you? So he's not coming across as emotionally mature or capable at this point. He has a pattern. And his pattern is, I'm upset. I need space. It's not great. It's not great. I mean, everybody needs space. Yeah. And he seems to need a whole lot of it. A whole lot of space. And after the space is done, he doesn't actually resolve things in his mind. Yeah. I was just going to say, he doesn't get any more clarity from the space is what I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's like he's made up his mind. He just wants to sit in the space with the already made up mind. (laughs) So um, Lauren says she's not holding it against him or his marriage, but the emotions aren't dissipating as quickly as she would like to. He says he's in the same boat and it's fair how she feels, but he really did drop the ball. She says moving forward, she just needs consistency in his words. She says she she got vocally dramatic and she felt like he wasn't her husband and it was a man she met six days ago. Um, These two are speaking cautiously and I don't want to say they're speaking therapy speak, but, you know, things like vocally dramatic, um, you're my best selves, I'm not at my purest, you're the most genuine, it's like a... It's not the average Joe language, I would say. <laughs> when you so, hear that language, do you think it's for the two of them in their interaction or it's for us, the audience? I genuinely think that's how they speak. In that part, they are matched well. Very for nice. Orion, I think that Orion is saying it, trying to keep up with Lauren because Lauren is a self-actualized woman who knows her thoughts clearly and can articulate them very clearly. I don't know if he's ever been challenged that way. And I think he's taken aback. <laughs> like, oh shit, I have to keep up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think he's trying to keep up with that. Um, she blows him a kiss and he's tearing up. She tells him to come over and they hug. And once again, she's reassuring him, even though she was the one that was insulted. But I digress. Um, Claire and Cameron, the, uh, Cameron went to the doctor, uh, on the resort. The doctor cannot help. So he's going to a doctor in town in Cancun. And she says she cannot go because of her meeting. I posed to you this question, Aid. Should she have gone with Cameron to the doctor? I will answer your question. But my first thought was, how'd they find a doctor for Cameron, but they can't find a doctor for Emily's hand? (laughs) I don't think they got that checked out. (laughs) I don't think they want to get that checked out. And I also, I wasn't sure. On one hand, I was like, at this stage, you really need to be accompanying him in his medical emergencies. But as long as you like check in on him and show the appropriate level of concern, and you already have this mandatory meeting. I don't know why it's mandatory or not mandatory, so uh, we can't judge whether she could have missed it or not. I wish she would have gone with him to the doctor, but I totally understand if she couldn't. 
I think that's fair. But I'm also thinking about like, what if Cameron was like a husband she hadn't just met? Would this meeting be so mandatory? The minute this man said he had to go to the doctor, that was the first thing she said. Oh, I have a mandatory meeting. Like, it wasn't just a meeting. It was just like a mandatory meeting that I'm just like, would she have dropped everything to be with him? I don't know. Maybe I'm picking on her, but I wish she could have gone, like you said. Um, in the confessional, she goes, I know that he's in pain. I know he hasn't slept because of this. So I hope everything works out for him. Um, that was a little bit too flippant for me, but again, <laughs> engaged I, could, enough. I could be nitpicking. I just, I hope everything works out. This is not like a pitch meeting or a sale or something. It's his health. You just said he's in pain and he hasn't even slept because of it, but okay. Um, <clears throat> Austin and Becca have a moment on the beach. Austin says he wants to clear stuff with her that in the past she said she has had exes that were avoidant. And she doesn't want, he doesn't want her to think that he's one of those. Um, she says that she was raised Jewish, but she's agnostic. He says that he's plain old Christian and his parents didn't line up on faith. And he thinks it's beneficial to have that conversation because they might have differences. Becca says, we do have differences. <laughs> she says there is more than the difference. Uh, there's more than just the differences that they have. And she's focused on them building a foundation. And if they can build on that, that they should be fine. He says that they should start with the small issues and build onto the bigger issues. She says that she's not worried about how the issues will impact their relationship because they are strong six days in. So, yay. I am not worried about these two. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how your answer is. Let's not talk about anything difficult until we're ready. I'm like, so let's get more and more invested in this relationship without dealing with any of the important things in life. I'm not saying they have to talk about everything, but they're making a very intentional decision to talk about nothing. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Because it's like, they keep kicking it down the can. And it's like, at what point do we get to talk about it? Who decides when? So Orion says that he's in his head. And he feels bad. He's telling Lauren this, that he's not as talkative and touchy as he usually would be. Um, Lauren says that Orion is still feeling like he failed the marriage and failed her. So she wants to talk to Dr. Pia. I think you said this last week. Um, an expert on your honeymoon, that is not a good sign. <laughs> and guys, you have to go back to our interview with Nicole and hear her opinion on Dr. Pia. They call they share what's happening she asks if that's how he still feels he says no but what's clear is that they need more of a foundation and he failed her with the words that he used and because of that he put her in an uncomfortable situation where altogether now she didn't feel safe he tears up again and says that it's so heavy and once again lauren is reassuring him Dr. Pia says she appreciates his vulnerability and she hears the judgmental words on himself and is, and is that Lauren's thoughts? She says, no. She asks Orion, do you believe her? And he says, I'm telling you the way these guys talk. He said, I believe her when the elevation of emotions came down, <laughs> then they were able to talk about it that he says it just got uncomfortable and he was confused when the tone got elevated because he had to protect his mom and his sister from that and he doesn't want that to be part of his marriage. This was the point where I was like, hmm, what are you saying, Orion? Because I don't like the direction he's going with this. Is he comparing the conversation they had to a potentially violent situation that his mom and sister experienced? Or am I, am I reading too much into this? It could be that. Uh, that's one interpretation. Another is just that his stepfather maybe yelled a lot. And even then I would okay. do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's fair. I, the yelling, okay, I can see like if he's projecting his past trauma, but I just think it's a step too far comparing what she did because she wasn't yelling. 
I I think she was just very. I don't I don't know what the word. This, to use. this is why I keep on like describing him. Like I keep on saying he's a child. Lauren spoke to him in a direct manner. Yes, and he could not handle that directness. And instead of seeing inside himself and being like she was just direct. Or I don't like conflict of any kind, except for I don't think that's Orion. I think Orion's fine with conflict. Um, he just didn't like being spoken to directly. <laughs> and now he's comparing it to being yelled at, which is not the same thing at all. Quite frankly, maybe it's not being spoken directly, but being called out. There we go. Yeah. He says right now he's having a really hard time just feeling confident in that because of how intense and raw the emotions were so then dr pia says okay and that i need for toad to be calm for voices not to be elevated maybe respect respectful of one another and orion says yeah i don't first off this is where like experts you were not there <laughs> you were not there and i guess you haven't seen the video either because yeah. it sounded like dr pia was telling Lauren to not do these things that she never did. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, to be fair, I think she asked them, did it get elevated? And Lauren was like, yes, my tone got, you know, whatchamacallit. And it kind of corroborated what Orion was saying. She took it too far when she said maybe, maybe remain respectful of one another. Okay. And I understand that she was speaking in hypothetical, but it felt like an accusation towards Lauren, and I did like it. Mm-hmm. So then Dr. Pia asks if Lauren can agree to that. Lauren pauses for just a second. I'm hoping in that second she's processing that she did not do these things. Because that's what I was hoping. Yes. Sorry. I think she was feeling, again, maybe I'm projecting what I was feeling. because, And I think I got slight confirmation in after party because you have to be conscious of how you react as a black woman on TV. So to add to your point, like, I think she was also thinking, I don't want to agree to something like I'm copying to something that I don't think I did. And it was just a lot to process at that moment. So she had to take a beat. And so after her beat, Lauren says her tone elevates, but there was no yelling. And she gets animated when she's frustrated and when she's not being heard. So what Lauren is saying is I have normal human emotions. (laughs) (laughs) And I, like, black woman to black woman, I was, like, practically yelling at the TV, yes, you're allowed to have emotions, even if this idiot over here would prefer not to deal with your emotions, even though he just married you. Okay. Yeah. So Dr. Pia says, so you didn't feel safe, (laughs) and you felt attacked, and reiterates Orion saying that her intentions were being questioned. So Dr. Pia asks Orion if he believes her, and he says he believes her. Um, and he does believe that Lauren is genuine. Dr. Pia says marriage is an emotional bank account. You need to put deposits uh, in and then fights like these are a withdrawal. But you have to keep feeding into it. And she said to focus on having fun on your honeymoon. That's, I'm sure she didn't mean to. I keep on like excusing her. That was really bad advice. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're on the same page. Because my words were, I don't know if Dr. Pia was helpful. Because I was going like, what? Deposits or whatever? It's funny. That didn't make sense until later on in the episode with another couple. But I honestly don't think Dr. Pia was helpful in this situation. Orion, who still looks distraught, <laughs> says that there have been a lot of great deposits on the honeymoon. But this was a big withdrawal for him. So Dr. Pia just says, more deposits, more deposits. Um, Lauren says it wasn't a big withdrawal, that she expressed emotions and she thinks that they've come to an understanding. Um, So then she, you know, they're off with Dr. Pia and she's like, what can I do for you? Which, this whole thing really annoyed me. (laughs) (laughs) This whole interaction with Dr. Pia, everything about it annoyed me. Because we started with, Orion said something very shitty to Lauren. He then denied saying it. Lauren then called him out. Then he turned it into, I feel like I failed at this marriage. Poor me. Now their therapy session is about making Orion feel better. Yeah. Then he's like, oh, she, like, I felt abused. I'm sorry. That's what it sounded like he said. And she's like, oh, you feel bad? Okay, well, what do you need? What can I do to make it better? I'm like, what is this bullshit? 
<laughs> but yes, he needs his space again so he could catch his breath. So she said she'll come back later. I'm just surprised at how much this rocked him. It's just been seven days. I mean, I get it. Everyone's different or whatever, but this is a very huge reaction. Like, I don't know if it's like a childhood trauma reignited or something, but this was like a, I did not expect this big of a reaction. It, I don't know what's going on in Orion's head. So does he really recognize that he did try to imply that, that there was something bad about her having sex two months before she ever met him? I don't think Orion can handle Lauren. And I think he reads that realization and he's just, instead of facing it head on, he's just trying to back out. That's just my thoughts. And I see it as, it's not that he can't handle Lauren. I don't think he could handle being married to another adult. (laughs) He needs Uh, a lot of Molly, a lot of cuddling. I guess, I guess. So Tate has been waiting for this moment. Since we started the show, since she first was introduced to Claire. So we see Claire in the room by herself. And she says it's the first time she's been in the room. And then she takes a huge exhale. (laughs) I didn't even notice it. (laughs) Because Tate was saying, when will this woman take a deep breath? And I was like, there she is. (laughs) Um, She talks about how they've spent a lot of time together and going from single to this is a lot. And she hopes his ear is okay while she revels in her freedom. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) the couples all meet up. I feel like they've met up too many times on this trip. Um, Cameron's not there uh, because he's still at the doctor. Um, Orion asks, where is he? And Claire tells them all about his ear, his doctor. Um, And then he shows up. Wait, I'm sorry. She said, hopefully he shows up. Are you not in contact with this man? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> I'm like, do your phones not work there? Like, are you not texting? Are you not calling? <sighs> so Austin asks everybody what they did. Orion says they were supposed to go to the beach, but they FaceTimed Dr. Pia instead. You've got to be kidding me. You're on a funny, freaking honeymoon vacation and you missed the beach to call Dr. Pia? Um... On by terms, it was dire. Orion talks about their first hurdle, and Lauren is like, That was our second hurdle. (laughs) And they talk a lot about communicating and clarity and space. And then Austin is like, Space is necessary. I was like, I, yeah. So Cameron shows up with a a bouquet, the likes I've never seen before in my life. I didn't even know how the bed carried it, it was so huge. He's tall enough. Huge, giant bouquet. So she, I mean, Claire is super excited about the flowers, but she does ask about his ear, and he's like uh, antibiotic something something. Um, Claire, and they're doing an interview, Claire and Cameron, and she is talking about how much it means to her that he got the flowers, like he was having a very hard day, and he went out of his way to get this giant bouquet. Um, and Cameron says he'll take some antibiotics and he'll be all right. So that's good to hear. Uh, Emily says that she's sad that they're leaving. Oh, Claire's reaction to receiving those flowers was embarrassing. It was like an awkward side hug, fool. I don't know what kind of, oh, like PTA hug. I was like, just give me a kiss. Even if it's just a peck on the lips or something. It was just really awkward. And I was like, that doesn't match what this man just gave you like a huge tower of flowers that's taller than you. And also, I thought that Cameron looked really handsome at the beach. I don't know what was different, but he just looked really handsome. Meanwhile, I was like, why do these bouquets have to be given in front of everybody? Why does it have to be this, like, public gesture? Because hasn't she said that people don't claim her, like, in public and something like that? And then he got it for her. So maybe just like, hey, I like you. I'm not embarrassed to be with you. And this is, you know, what I want. And also, the producers want everyone to make other people feel jealous. (laughs) Emily says that she's sad that they're leaving. Becca agrees, says she didn't expect to get so much out of it, that this trip was a relief and a distraction from all the physical and mental pain that she's gone through, and that she asked for a sense of humor, but they gave her like the weirdest human puppy, 
And Austin was like, you were fun too. I'm like, I, you know, it's really funny. Honestly, from the beginning with these two, I've just been like, are you ever going to get serious? And I feel like my answer is no. And the minute they get serious, they're going to have problems. I feel like the two of them want to laugh and play and be weird together and not grow. That sounds mean, but not grow up. (laughs) I have a question. If uh, Emily says the physical and mental pain, isn't, did they cut out the whole ATV accident with the blood? Because they're leaving this episode and we never saw it. They still so have that, couples retreat and stuff. Oh, you don't think it's the honeymoon? Okay, I thought it was the honeymoon. I think I did, but since it hasn't happened yet, and you know, we know where we're going, um, I just, you know, there's still couples retreat. There's still just the two of them hanging out together. So it could really happen at any time, right? I just don't see an ATV in Denver in the winter. Uh, yeah, in the snow. No, that's snowmobile or whatever. This was like an... I thought I saw sand and ATV and stuff. Okay. I thought they were all in a boat and she was bleeding. And they were like, oh my God. So again, I could have missed that. Uh, so I guess we'll we'll see, but definitely not the honeymoon. <laughs> um, or it was and they cut it out. <laughs> I, it, I think it would be hard for them to cut out how injured she was. <laughs> That's like, that true. definitely required medical attention. I don't know how they could have cut that out. That's true. Okay. Lauren talks about how she and Orion have been on a roller coaster. It's been one extreme to the next, and so she's enjoying the ride, and that she'd rather get it all out now. These are lies. <laughs> Austin tells the group about he and his wife's nonsense plan of putting off anything difficult. And Claire affirms their nonsense by saying, oh, that's good. (laughs) So I want to say that when they said that, I took a step back and I was like, you know what? This might not be a bad idea. And then Dr. Pia's whole emotional bank thing suddenly made sense now. Like this is where you just make the deposits, have your time together, enjoy yourself, get to know each other and have those fond feelings so that when the tough stuff gets happening, like you can deal with those contentious things later. It just didn't sound outrageous to me when they said it. It did feel like what Dr. Pia was talking about. To me, it just looks like avoidance. Because they did try to talk about something important and it was a natural conversation. But because it might be uncomfortable or they might disagree, they're like, "Uh -uh, let's not do that. (laughs) I don't think that's a great plan. I'm not saying you have to hash out every single little thing. It just seems more of an avoided behavior than an actual strategy. Yeah. Okay. Brennan says the honeymoon is going great. Emily says that she's used to speaking her mind, but she has to watch what she says. She has to be more cognizant. And you're like, if we're all thinking about the example about making a joke about him not having fun, we're like, oh, girl, you didn't do anything wrong. Um, Cameron decides to tell the group that he and Claire have talked about it. And they're like, if we're dating, we would have thrown ourselves at each other. So an important thing for us is transitioning from a friendship to a romantic relationship. Okay. Oh, not a good sign, but okay. Claire says she needs to be better at waiting than just saying something. And Lauren says, me too. And Claire says, she's my soul sister, which reminded me of Tiffany on Love is Blind because that's the last time I heard someone refer to somebody as a soul sister. Um, (laughs) I would never, but I do have a friend who would definitely (laughs) Um, refer to someone as a soul sister. Oh, okay, because that, that, I lifted my brows. So I said, okay. <laughs> Do you remember when um, Love is Blind Girl said it to her friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were meeting Brett for the first time. Ugh. And uh, I think when we recapped, I was like, I have no comment. I'm just going to be quiet here. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren says that she got what she wanted. She wanted to see what made him tick. And they've definitely figured out that she's a fiery person and her tone could dictate the tone of the conversation and the tone is making him progress. And I was just getting more and more annoyed the more Lauren was talking. Not at her, because she's trying to smooth things over and she's trying to be the best version of herself. But at the situation where everything she is saying, I'm like, I just don't actually think that's the case. I mean, at this point, we already had three of the brides 
say all the things they needed to work on. And I hadn't heard any man say, you know, I could be better at X, Y, Z. So the whole thing was just really annoying. Just taking on blame and talking about all the things you could do better. And she apologizes again. The group doesn't really know what she's apologizing for. But just in case we forgot, they flash back to her and Orion's um, R-word incident. And she basically is apologizing for that again um, in front of the group. Yeah, we get confirmation that the group has no idea the details on everything that's going on, which just makes their conversation awkward. In an interview, Orion says that the unintentional joke cut deep. He can't stop thinking about it. It's hard to be vulnerable with the other couples because he's not sure they would understand um, race, culture, and things like that. So it's still a big obstacle. They were just talking like no one else was there. And if <laughs> it was I were like, the I other... don't want to be at that dinner. Yeah, especially since they don't know details and everyone's trying to be respectful. Like, if I were the other couples, I'd be like, what the heck are we talking about? Can I eat? <laughs> we close out with a riot uh, with Lauren saying that um, you can't hurt my feelings which is bullshit like I said I think Lauren just says that to free a riot to say whatever he'd like to say and a riot says I reserve myself but he's trying not to do that so much and open up a different door and that feels scary mm. alright guys we will be right back and we are back to the last day of the honeymoon Cameron and Claire get up. She asks him about his ear. He seems to be doing great. It's still blocked. They have a whole long conversation about what happened at the airport when they were coming here and how it won't happen again. And feelings and you interpreted this. I could not. I'm like, this is just the act of like going to an airport, getting on a plane, getting off the plane. Like this whole thing Traveling with people is difficult, but the evolution that they are talking about is not, it, it, it didn't require this level of conversation. No, it did not. <laughs> Their conversations are so painful. I am sick of this tiptoeing around conversation. He's like, you were mad I abandoned you. No, it wasn't an abandonment. Okay, that I left and didn't come to, no, it wasn't. Okay, I overreacted. Okay, yes, so you're over, then he's scared to say it, and then we're going, and she, girl, just, ugh. <laughs> he's just, trying to not offend her but what can he say because no matter what it is she's like no it wasn't exactly that but it wasn't this but okay I overreact oh god jeez <laughs> oh it was bad it was bad bad um, so next up is Lauren and Orion Lauren tells us that they were up till 3am uh, talking and she tells us that Orion says he can't go back from the offensive comment that she made in the hot tub that he felt like a minority in his marriage and it really hasn't oh, gone <laughs> The man told a black woman that he felt like a minority in his marriage. Lauren has apologized. She apologizes for more. Some more. She takes ownership. Uh, but that the repercussions are going to make her feel equally disconnected from the marriage. Yes, being constantly berated about a mistake that you made and have apologized for multiple times. Uh, yeah, not going to make you feel great. We flash to Becca and Austin. They talk about going home, moving in. He talks about how she can't be as messy as she is here. I was like, wherever you go, you take yourself. So good luck with that. <laughs> She's just suddenly not going to be messy because she's home. Good luck. Then they have a discussion about how she's excited to learn how he could show up for her in difficult ways. Um, he basically is like, I don't really get this, but I'm committed to doing it. <laughs> is there, I mean, I don't know how else to describe that. No, you're right. We go to Claire. She's asking Cameron if he needs help packing. I mean, he did hardly bring anything. So no, he doesn't need help. He says he can pack in two minutes. Emily is sitting on her luggage, um, which was funny to me because that's the life I live where you're just like, is this thing going to close? You guys, I won't go to hard-sided luggage because I'm really scared that everything won't fit. Um, <laughs> someone says that they're going to breakfast with everybody else before they leave. And then we see Lauren in a egg chair in a corner, clearly facing away from the camera, away from just like, she does not want to be on camera, it seems like. 
and Claire is sitting on the floor talking to her. Her And Lauren is... (laughs) It all comes back. It all comes back. Mm -hmm. Um, No matter what, when I'm watching this show, I do love it when they're there for each other and they support each other. And I enjoyed watching Claire really... She was doing good. Um, So These are the times where... I would give an exception to my rule of keeping the couple separated because I can only imagine how isolated that Lauren probably feels and feels frust- hopeless, like there's nothing I can do. So it's nice that she has someone else that, you know, she can come fight in. These are the times where I see the benefits of them interacting. Definitely. Lauren says to Claire, she's been trying to hold it together. She felt herself falling and now she's like, WTF. She overheard Orion say that she didn't have his back and she's given him so much grace. And he's like, no, you attacked my community and my culture. And she's like, how many more ways can I tell you that I'm sorry? And now you're down here saying that I don't have your back and that I failed the marriage. Who do we think he was talking to? A producer, probably doing it on the fly. (laughs) Oh, okay. That's what I I think. That's my theory. Okay, that's true. I was thinking Dominique. He mentioned Dominique a lot during the before they got married. His friend. Okay, I didn't think about it. A producer makes sense. There was a fly producer in the background. That's so cool. I know, right? I was like, it's not Montre. I don't think we need to find the name of that producer. They showed them enough that we should have gotten a name card. (laughs) Claire's sitting there. She's like, I cannot even fathom. Lauren is like, I'm so frustrated. Um, Lauren said that they had a huge blow up and she asked for a divorce and took off her ring. She's so bad. She tells That's- Claire that this is the most difficult thing to deal with other than losing her mom. And that this is the most difficult thing she's done in her life. At this point, I wondered if Claire had the full story or if she was still operating under generalizations. I don't but think I, Claire needs the full story. I feel like Lauren's explained. I said something wrong. I apologized. Like even at the when the girls were at the pool, I can't remember which week that was. She said it like I said something wrong. I apologized, and I kind of don't think Claire needs any more than that. Yeah, that's fair. I just, I'm just to say that she attacked his family or whatever it is he said. I'm just, and then the thing to forget when she said since losing her mom. She's grieving. I'm not trying to do a pity card or anything, but on top of all the emotions, I can only imagine that she's thinking the one person she would want to talk to right now is her mom. So there's a lot of emotions going on in Lauren. So I I, I really wholly sympathize with her. And I think based on what Lauren has sort of said, her husband, I'm not going to say that this person was supposed to be a replacement for her mom, but they were supposed to occupy like some of that hole. Yeah. And it's not really working out like that. Mm, far from it. So over, we see Orion talking to Pastor Cal. You guys, this is like last part. I'm just going to need to fed myself. I'm going to have to do a couple of exhales just like Claire did to get through. Because... <laughs> Orion really just spent the rest of the episode really pissing me off. Mm-hmm. Orion thanks Pastor Cow for talking to him. And then he tells Pastor Cow that she made a careless, crude joke. And Pastor Cow asked, did she admit that it was wrong? And he said, after emotions had settled. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> she did not wait till after emotions had settled. Lie number one. <laughs> She said immediately. And he says he thought it was really nice that she apologized, but the weight of the joke started to sit with him in a sense where he felt really offended and violated. And Pastor Cal says that he has the right to stand firmly um, and that this is a very surprising conflict with you guys and it's the last thing he expected to happen. Pastor Cal asked again if she apologized. And he's like, yes. And then Pastor Cal asked if he's accepted. And he doesn't really answer that. (laughs) And he continues on to say that she said that he's lying about how things played out and she wants a divorce. And Pastor Cal is like, that's a knee-jerk reaction to pain. 
Pastor Cal asks how he feels, and he said he's sad because he knows that she cares and they've built a connection. But anytime it comes up, it's just not sitting naturally with him, and it gets pretty explosive. I mean, stuff is happening off camera, so I will give him that things are explosive. We just haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. And Pastor Cal says, you haven't had a chance to express how you actually feel. And Orion agrees with him. And I'm like, my dude, I feel like you have had many, many an opportunity and taken many, many an opportunity to express how you really feel. Um, I thought he said they hadn't talked about it. So how did he get to zero to 100? He was lying again. So how? how, how? Like, we just found out that this thing was still weighing on him. He's allowed to, but when she asked multiple times, are we good, are we good, are we good? He said we were good. So then he said that because she had sex, he said, oh, that was a problem. You didn't take it seriously. Then she called him out on it. Then he goes, no, I didn't have a problem with it. But then now that I've settled, I see that now that this is bothering me. And then now you tell Pastor Cal, look him in the eye and you say like, oh, when we talk about it, it goes from zero to a hundred. When? Now, this is why I had a problem with everything else that he said when he said things like he felt attacked and he, you know, is like um, feeling some kind of way, like it reminded him of the situations he had to protect his sister and mom from. And then now zero to 100 and all that. I don't like what putting it all together is trying to imply. I, I, I'm uncomfortable and I don't feel safe with that. It's just very turned it around. You are the one who's still upset about the thing. You are the one who, like, you are starting these things and then you are like, who, me? Yeah. So Lauren, Pastor Kyle says he wants to talk to Lauren. So Lauren talks to him. And Lauren says that she heard him say that she didn't have his back and it sent her into a spiral. And like she's like, through all of this, I believe through all of this, Lauren is crying. Yeah. She, she's basically crying the whole, everything we're about to say until the end of the episode, Lauren is crying. Mm-hmm. Um, so she said she gave him cra- grace and he didn't do that for her. Um, Lauren says the joke, I shouldn't have said it. Um, I understand I should have said it. Like, I get it. Um, but yelling and taking the ring off was wrong. It's not that she's not trying. A pastor cow is like, don't say you want a divorce. It's a bad move, but then he asks her if she wants a divorce, and she says no, that she was letting her passions override the goal of marriage. And Pastor Cal says it was a knee-jerk reaction to, to pain. So Pastor Cal is like, this is a very heavy stage, um, and he wants to talk to them together. So we see our favorite producer again. Um, she comes in, they sit there, and they talk. And Pastor Cal says that every... Successful couple has to fight through imperfection. Um, he wants to talk. At this point, I'm like, because at one point we saw the couples being like, oh, we're not leaving. <laughs> so I'm like, is everybody about to miss their flight because Lauren and Orion like, need marriage therapy? <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, Pastor Cal recaps like the lack of grace, the hurt. Um, and she underst- She reiterates, like, I understood what I said was like not good. But he keeps on saying, I don't get it. And then Orion says, you have, when we discuss this, you haven't been able to say how you feel. And he says, he feels like you offended me and violated my family. And he has a whole community. And they're going to have opinions about this. And everyone who's indigenous, it affects all of us at a much deeper level. And he's never been able to say that and finish his sentence. And she says, it went from zero to 100 because you said that I didn't have your back. And Pastor Cal is like, you know, you interrupted, so let him speak. And she's like, I have. I just want to, <laughs> I want to touch on something that Orion said. You guys may recall when Orion was like, yeah, I've said the N word. And I was like, it, does he think that Lauren is not going to have to explain to us why if they were to stay married, she stay married to a guy who's like, I've said the N word, no big deal. Is he the only person in the community who, who thinks need to be explained to? Yeah, I had the same thing. I was like, for all talk of giving grace, Lauren could use that as a fighting point, but she has not once ever brought up him using the N-word. Intentionally, knowing exactly what the N-word means, by the way, which she did not know. 
Exactly. And I think that's what's so annoying. It's like she didn't know the origin of the word. She wasn't even planning. She really just truly meant that she thought it was a play on his skin. Again, she was wrong, but she was profusely apologizing immediately. You could tell her intent. And then when he says that you've offended and you have to explain, that's where you stand up for your wife. It's it's extenuating circumstances. I just met her. She didn't understand the culture. She has taken it upon herself to go learn the culture. Anyone with eyes could see that it was not like offend. Like I'm curious to know if his mom, his sister, and all are as offended as he is because Orion just needs to man up and say that he doesn't want this instead of looking for things as excuses to back out of this marriage. Just to like complete out sort of their thing with Pastor Cal. Laura does tell us that she's been researching not just derogatory terms, but terms of endearment in Navajo. And Pastor Cal asks Orion how he feels about it. And he's like, he respects, should appreciate it. And it speaks loads. And then Pastor Cal finishes his thought and is like, is that not enough? And Orion's like, I can't get past what she said. And Pastor Cal asks, are you saying you cannot forgive her? And he says, when he was a kid, he experienced racism they called him an apple because, like, red on the outside, white on the inside. And that no, was the what? second time he had f- faced racism. And Isn't that it was white a- on the outside? Sorry. Well, I thought about it, but I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> an apple is red on the outside and white on the inside. Oh, okay. And that, what, like, that was a very crude joke from her. Pastor Cal is talking about Orion to Earth is to human and forgive divine. And then Lauren leaves. She's like, I'm coming back. This is the first time I think I see someone on reality TV leave and tell us that they are coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Major props to Lauren for that. Because y'all know how I feel about people storming out. But at this point, honestly, I've just watched this poor girl cry for so long. I just feel really bad for her. Do you think Pastor Cal had seen the footage from the hot tub at this point? I, I find that difficult to believe. I thought they get like daily reports during the honeymoon that include footage. So there's just part of me is like, there's no way he has not seen it. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's what I, I, I don't know, to be honest, I'm trying to gauge by his reaction, but it's just such a sensitive topic where you have to acknowledge Orion's hurt. And it's just, how do you say it wasn't, I don't know. Lauren's, disrespect wasn't a blatant I said the n-word it was a joke that was incorrect that was just not appropriate and I like not I like I just find it very interesting how we have switched from she used a word that was a racial slur but now we've transitioned to she made a joke (laughs) because when this originally happened I thought the offense was the use of the word but here, Orion is saying that it was the joke. It was her pointing and laughing. But that was because she thought, th- I don't know. You can't. There's no win-win. Like I said, I, do- I just don't see how they come back from There was no way. Orion had this in his back po- pocket to use because I genuinely believed him when he said they were moving on. Um, that's okay. Wait. So, Lauren ends with, it doesn't matter what I do, I could write a 50-page essay and give an entire PowerPoint to the entire US of A. There is nothing more I could do. And Orion agrees with her, and he doesn't know what he could do to explain it. Um, They then Frankenstein, or edit in um Lauren saying, I have no idea where we go from here as she leaves again. Um... But this is my like central question of this Orion Lauren thing. Is the problem what she said or is the problem the sex? And then because he couldn't use the sex, he went back to what she said. Yes. I what, think. What do you say? Yes to hun? Oh, I'm so, oh, the, the latter, the <laughs> latter. I think. Uh, I'm really, really guys. I'm really trying not to minimize his hurt. But I can only go by what he said, which was that he had moved on. I think he couldn't use the sex, and then he went back to it. And it was a couple of things that he added to the pot. 
I think the main thing was the sex. Then he realized that that was being silly. And it, based on what he said, his sister said, you basically just slut shamed her. He was like, oh, I didn't do that. But I think, honestly, the kicker, if I'm being honest, is the tone that she used on him. I think he created a story from that. And then he decided, like, I'm going to be mad about everything else. You know how when, not that he's annoyed by her, or maybe he is, when someone annoys you, everything they do is suddenly just so annoying. I think he did not, he was triggered by whatever that tone was. And that just became, that just snowballed into a whole bunch of things. So I feel like you're saying (laughs) that he was triggered by accountability. Yeah. He doesn't have the emotional maturity. And he's like, if this is how I'm going to be spoken to every single time in his mind, from his viewpoint, I'm not going to do that. I don't know what his experience is on being called out. I don't know if he's ever dated someone who is as having their shit together as Lauren. And it scared him. He's like, I don't have, I can't do this. And instead of trying to wade through it and work through it, he found the closest thing that he could use as an excuse. And I'm just mad because we have a black woman on this show who has her shit together, who is able to like be a good partner, one of the best kinds to be on maps where they can work through anything. It's not about, oh, they have a bald head or they have oh, anything. And once again, they were given someone who is not emotionally mature or ready for a marriage. And I'm just annoyed. Yep. <laughs> I think, and I want to make space because I feel maybe Orion has just convinced me, but I'm just like, there is enough about Orion's life experience that I will never understand. I am not a, an indigenous man. I I fully understand that my range is limited. But I just because my range to understand him is limited doesn't mean that I can't see that he is not extending any empathy towards Lord. I just can't, and I think I would feel a little bit differently if he had not very quickly and very openly admitted to his N-word usage. These are the things. No, we can all agree that her joke was inappropriate. He has every right to be hurt. That, we're not arguing that, that is fact or whatever. But you cannot say you are fine. You cannot lie and say you never got the chance to talk about it because it always escalated. That is not fair. You cannot come back and then create something she was not aware of and then make it seem like she set out to officially... Like, you know how sometimes when people use the N-word, they say it because they want to hurt you or they think like that's, you know, that was not what... She set out to be, but don't present it to be that way. Because honestly, imagine if there was no footage. Yeah. Of this. this would be a completely different conversation. So that's where it's just like iffy or whatever. So it for me, if he wanted to forgive her and give her grace, Grace, in terms of continuing on with the marriage, he would. But I think he already didn't want her, and this was his out. Which is really gross. And I don't know if he's aware enough to understand what he's doing. I don't like giving him that kind of pass. But it's really gross to be like, you you have done something so offensive that I just cannot come back from it. And I can't be with you because you have offended my community. But and, and he's the one who brought it up because I was like, I need to hear from the indigenous people of the United States about this. Like, <laughs> I need to go find somebody to tell me their interpretation of what we're watching because I just, I, multiple would be great because I would love to get their perspective on this. Aid, if he was so offended, why do you want to give her head? <laughs> you're lying I, I, I'm sorry you were willing to explore we were talking all of the sex things if that never happened are you telling me you were never going to bring it up you were having sexual conversations you're so offended by her you want to sleep with her come on 
<laughs> I, what really gets me about our ride is I try not to forget that this is the same man who said, my culture is too matrilineal. I don't want to be bossed around. I was raised in a matrilineal culture. I want a strong woman. This is a very, very unsure and confused individual. I'm telling you, that's why I'm convinced that it was the tone thing that switched him. He doesn't want to be bossed around. And in his mind, that's all he saw when she was talking to him was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to have to be held accountable. Like I have to say the truth and be consistent. What? That's my thing. But who knows? We don't know. We'll see how it unfolds. Like maybe we're being too harsh, but I mean, it'll be very interesting to see what you guys think about this. But I don't know. As of today, I love this episode. That's how I feel. I worry that... And that's why I said I want to hear from more indigenous people about this. I worry that our perspective is skewed because right now I'm like, fuck this guy. <laughs> um, I don't think very highly of him based on this interaction. But then I wonder if I'm being dismissive of where he's coming from, right? You know what? You're absolutely right. Honestly, if there's anyone out there in the indigenous community, please weigh in with your thoughts. Like, it would be you're right. As human beings, that's what human beings do. And then you'd be skewed and all that. So, but I think we're acknowledging that he's not wrong to feel that way. For me, again, sorry, I'm saying it once more again. It's just that we thought we had moved on, but you hadn't. But then you lied about it by saying that she didn't allow you to move on. That's what I don't like, the dishonesty of that. Because she kept asking, are you good? Are you good? Are you good? And you kept saying yes. But how would she know? That you weren't good. So in terms of the hurt, if he can't move past it genuinely and all that, you're allowed. Like, but I just think you should have said that and not let her on, but not make her feel like everything was good. And if this sex thing hadn't come up, how would we have found out that, you know, you wanted to have sex with her five minutes before and then five minutes after that, all of a sudden we need to get to know each other more. So I don't know. I think That's it for me, me, where I stand is that. I just don't think that you can sit on a high horse from where he's sitting. Um, I just don't think, I'm telling you, I feel like I would feel much differently if this man had not openly admitted, yeah, I've used the N-word. Like, very flippantly, um, she very quickly moved on from it. I'm not saying he's required to do what she did, but there is zero acknowledgement that you are not, you know, you're not perfect either. So... You acknowledge you are perfect. You received grace. And your reaction now is to be like, I can't extend myself to you that same way. Yeah. That really bothers me. Yeah. (sighs) All right, Aid. Who has your bouquet this week? Cameron for bringing that giant bouquet. (laughs) Um, And Claire, you know what? Even though Claire didn't go with him to the doctor, which I was like, ah. I like how Cameron and Claire are trying so hard. Both of them are putting in the work. And Cameron with that bouquet, this man is trying. Maybe later on we'll find out it's all a scam. But that's where I stand this week, because I just see two people trying really hard after a bumpy start. Okay, fair. Who has your bouquet? I got to give it to Lauren. I just, oh, I just realized you gave the bouquet to Claire, to Cameron for the bouquet. But um, <laughs> I got to give it to Lauren because I don't know that I would be able to be that clearly expressive of what I was trying to say. I would have just been taken over by emotions and just been like all over the place. But even through the tears, even through everything, she just made her points in every single situation very well. At the dinner with Pastor Cal, with Dr. Pia, with Orion by himself and all that. Like, that was commendable to me. Who has your ashes? Who else could get them? Orion, for all this nonsense. <laughs> for the trying to judge her for her sexual history, for the saying you were resolved on something, they're bringing it back. For, I'm sorry, lying to Pastor Cal. For not being able to handle someone just being direct and honest with you about what you said. Mm-hmm. All of it. Orion has my burnt ashes. Who has yours? Um, I think I'll switch it up a little bit and give it to Dr. Pia. Because I don't 
I don't know what she added and I'm beginning to feel like, did we make the, I said, we make the right choice by making her permanent. Cause, uh, I kept thinking, what would Dr. Viviana do if it was her? I don't know, but I wasn't satisfied with the way it was handled. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for this week. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at AlterCallMAFS. That's A-L-T-A-R-C-A-L-L-M-A-F-S. We love hearing from you guys on social media. We also love it when someone goes on the MAFS subreddit and people are like, which podcast should I listen to? And you guys, some of you said us. Appreciate it. We're available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you're so inclined. And we will be here next week. And also, if we are on your Spotify wrapped, please post and tag us. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Bye. Bye.